We just saw AMD talking about their new 6000 series cards. A lot to be excited about if you're anyone except Nvidia. They have come out of the gates swinging. What do we what do we think about what we've seen? Well, I think that, like you said, AMD is coming out strong with uh, their new lineup that they just showed off. Um, at the, we're recording this right after we just saw the uh, the reveal, and it's pretty impressive on paper, is what I'll say. So they revealed three different video cards: the 6800 XT, the 6800, and the 6900 XT. Uh, different price tiers, different performance tiers, uh, but it really seems like uh, they have an answer to everything that NVIDIA is doing, even on the tech side of things, which we'll get into with things like ray tracing. Uh, AMD has an answer to that finally, because we've been waiting for them to do something. NVIDIA has been pretty much in control of the graphics processing for PC, for PC gaming for a very long time now. So when AMD has, had revealed these cards and their internal performance metrics, I think there there is a lot to be excited about. In amongst the like PC gaming community where there's a lot of chat about stock, price, power, performance ratio, I think AMD also hit all of that right on the head as well. I think that's the main concern now is like in 2020, are they gonna be able to produce enough units to keep up with what we've seen a big demand for new gen cards like i think that if, if they can sort that out there this this might be amd's turn to go out in front yeah that, that is that is a really good point in terms of uh as we saw with the rtx 3080 and the 3090 launches uh there's those cards are very difficult to find um so supply has been low but demand has been high so if amd can kind of fit themselves into where there's still demand and not a lot of supply from NVIDIA, I think they can really start to make some moves uh, into PC gamers rigs, uh, which would be great. But um, the question of supply is some, is an unknown variable. We, we have no idea what their supply chain looks like. We have no, de no idea what will happen once these cards launch uh, next month in November. Uh, so those are unknown variables. But what we do know is that these cards are priced competitively uh, in rel relative to their NVIDIA counterparts. So uh, I guess we want to start with the 6800 XT. Dave, what do, what do, you, what do you think about it? So the 6800 XT, for 50 bucks cheaper, having such competitive performances to NVIDIA's 3080, that's, honestly, I didn't really expect the competition when it came to performance to be so close. And now they're also saying that its performance is going to be a lot more sustainable. It's it, how much power it's using is for, for me that was like well, sure it's fifty bucks cheaper, but you're also going to save money because chances are that's going to be a lot of people not having to upgrade a power supply as well. So there's 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 more than one aspect to keep in mind when you're upgrading to a new GPU now. The all the, all those things you mentioned are are important. Uh, the one thing that I am keeping an eye on though is those internal benchmark numbers. I'm really curious to see what how these cards stack up to each other in practical scenarios is what I'll say. Uh, but uh, so AMD has always been the sort of uh, company that offers the uh, offers value. Uh, as we've seen it in their recent past. So uh, $50 cheaper already inserts them into the conversation where even if they are a few frames per second behind in benchmarks, people will still consider, well, it's $50 cheaper. I don't know if that's gonna play in that big into a factor considering that uh, like things never go directly for MSRP. That's just like an, a rough estimate of what board partners put out. But the fact that they are aiming for something that's a little bit cheaper that is that seems to perform on par uh, and I guess better in some scenarios. I mean, we'll see. Uh, I wouldn't say it's it's surprising, but uh, it's it's necessary. It's, a, it's about time that they're doing this. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the RDNA 2 texture with, uh, architecture, which is on the new uh, consoles. But we are seeing some of the things that they've been talking about or has Microsoft has been talking about with consoles finally come through in the, the new PC hardware that we're getting from AMD. Like having all of their names attached to consoles as well, I think it's going to. I think I think it just inserts them into the conversation as, of gaming as a whole again. But when it comes to backgrounds, the PC performance, the 
6900 XT, I think, is the one that everyone wants to talk about, right? It was the 3090 that everyone was really excited for because it's the big... What did we call it last time? The flex card? <laughs> yeah. And their flex card is a little lighter on the wallet now. I say a little. Quite lighter on the wallet. And again, the performance it seems to put out against it, the 3090 and the 2080 Ti. Pretty exciting numbers. Yeah, the. I mean, I'm personally... <laughs> I don't necessarily care about that super duper high end stuff it, it gets people excited but um i think that what what speaks to me is what the what our dna2 is capable of at the top end it kind of speaks to what i said earlier about Invi uh, or about amd you know shying away from this the super high end enthusiast level uh, in their recent past uh, but now that they have a platform like our dna2 to finally you know have a strong foundation to build from uh, i think that's the that's my important takeaway when they reveal the 6900 xt i think something that's more practical is the 6800 the not xt version that's sort of like the mid-high range version that's going to go for 580 bucks this one's a little tricky because it's situated in between the 3080 and nvidia's 3070 which just launched and it is kind of wedging itself. It's trying to wedge itself price-wise between those two cards to kind of fill in that gap. The tricky part is I wanna see how it stacks against the 3070 directly, even though it's technically $80 more expensive. I wanna make sure that, you know, if someone's gonna go out and buy a 6800, that they are actually getting better performance than they would have with a 3070. And that's going to be an interesting thing uh, to see, uh, not only how they stack, but their, their availability. And if you're on NVIDIA's pl previous platforms right now, if you should make the jump, uh, or if you're waiting for that notify button to turn into uh, an add to cart button for your 3070 or 3080 that you've been chomping at the bit for, like if AMD can say, hey, our cards are available, they're also performing on par, if not better. And I suppose it's worth talking about as well, the idea of the synergy between their GPUs and CPUs, and not everyone is going to have a Ryzen CPU and, and make the most out of that um, synergy. It feels like it's been a while since we've had to think about like, oh, what, what GPU am I gonna have to plug with my CPU? Are they yeah. gonna talk properly? Like, I, yeah. I remember having those worries I don't know, like seven, eight years ago when I was building PCs. And then I was like, <laughs> uh, I don't have to worry about it for a, a, a good a good while. But now, right. and like that's that's obviously what the benchmarks were, right? Perfect case scenario with their GPUs, with their CPUs. I'd be, if I had a Ryzen in my machine, I'd be like, well, I've not been able to find a 3080 for love nor money. They're about as rare as rocking horse dung at the minute. My CPU is going to talk much friendlier with the Radeons, so... Yeah, that, that's a major thing too, is that they've claimed that you can get up to a 13% boost in performance when you've paired a Ryzen 500, 5000 series CPU on a 500, I think the, the 500 series chipset motherboard with a, a, a Radeon 6000 series card. I know that's a lot to kind of chew on, but it's uh, the motherboard, the CPU, and the GPU. When they're all working in tandem, there's uh, there's different technologies in which they, like you've said, can communicate with each other for better efficiency, which turns into better performance. Now, on this this stream we just saw, AMD didn't go into the, like the technical details of like exactly how that works, but that's an incredible case for like uh, for people to stay within brand. This also speaks to what they've been doing in the console space. Uh, this is an extension of that. So I'm not too surprised to see how it's playing out on PC. They've talked a lot about things like variable rate shading, smart access memory, sampler feedback streaming, uh, and just the ways in which that velocity architecture, everything kind of communicates with each other. It's all one solid ecosystem. That's what we're, that's what AMD is showing off for PC gaming now. It's kind of just taking that same design philosophy, but now offering it if you pair all of those AMD products together. I'm hyped for it, but obviously over the coming weeks, hopefully we're going to be running all sort of tests, benchmarks and reviews of uh, the Radeon cards. So stay tuned for that. I'm sure you'll you'll love doing that, Haim. You'd love a good benchmark, Eve. Ooh, that's a lot of work, but I'll do it. <laughs> that's right. We're, we're in the words of high school musical. We're all in this together. <laughs> if you want to see us all in this together, 
you can subscribe so you don't miss out on all this lovely PC gaming content. We'll see you next time.